welcome back to Let's Talk. We're talking about physical fitness. No, we're talking about physical fitness on campuses, which includes not just campuses uh, in the Western world, but right here in the Muslim world as well. We have to talk about that in a minute. Brother Rami, Brother Abu Abdul Rahman, thank you for joining us. You guys into the audience. I want you guys to get some questions in this segment. Uh, go ahead, brother, brother in the front row there. Assalamu alaikum. Actually, I'm very happy to, to be in such a very good place, hoping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. Uh, and then uh, I want to uh, uh, sh sh share the light on uh, why the uh, separation between men and women. I think they, they both of them are si uh, physically different. So our Islamic Sharia, ah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taught us for a long time of, uh, of years that we must separate between men and women uh, because they are physically different. While he, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taught us uh, how to, to, to teach our uh, children the prayer. He said, uh, learn your uh, child the prayer at the age of seven, and then hit him if he doesn't pray at the age of 10, and then separate between them uh, if they are uh, became uh, 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 older. Right. Separate between them, he said, فَرِّقُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي المضاجع. Uh, that means separate between them in the place of sleeping because mm -hmm. they are physically different. Yeah, so. The body of the, ma if the man is different than the body of the woman. So uh, uh, they are attracting to each other. So we should, if they want, want uh, uh, every one of them to concentrate or to uh, make his decision to, be, to succeed in his uh, seeking knowledge or such a thing, we must separate between mm -hmm. them because the shaitan will not leave him to concentrate in, in any information or anything. If he is, uh, if the girl is sitting beside him or the boy uh, s uh, yeah, sitting beside yeah. the, the girl. So the, the, the point here is that both of them are physically different. So they are attracting to each other. Of course. Uh, and uh, hoping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for any uh, uh, school or to for, for any uh, faculty to, to, to separate to between men and women. Yeah, okay, thank you for your points, brother. Thank you. Brother Rami, Brother Abu Abdul Rahman, uh, like we said before the break, importance about having a, a good community. I mean, that that's huge, right? Uh, I mean, paramount, right? Because it's it, huge. If, if you surround yourself, if you're living in a co-ed dorm with people of different races and backgrounds and religions, okay, this is all new. You know, it's like a sensory overload. You know, at first, and then you have people doing different things. And if you're a Muslim and you're by yourself and you don't have you don't pray regularly at the masjid, you don't have the sheikh's phone number and good Muslim yeah. friends. I mean, how, how long do you think this person will last? Uh, Rami, for example. Oh, not very long. Uh, I've heard of people that have uh, come from you know, from Egypt themselves, and they, they were very studious, and you know, and uh, they were very good in their deen. And within a few weeks of being, in, you know, out in the West, uh, they you know did a complete 180. Right, right. So I mean, it happens. Yeah. I mean, but again, it's it's a matter, you know, like brother, like the brother said before. I mean, you, you have to have knowledge. I mean, without knowledge, like if I if I don't know what's right and wrong, no. you know, right, sometimes right. I'll I'll make, I'll tell myself it's right. Right, right. You know, I'll make to what's you know. I don't. I, I, I part of being a Muslim. One of the fard is we have to seek knowledge every single day, yeah. and it's part of our obligation to seek knowledge every day. So, um, and a lot of and as human beings, we will try to make everything halal if we can. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, yeah and that's, right. and that's, and that's yeah. we will convince ourselves of anything. Especially when it appeals to the desires. Exactly. Yeah, and course, everything. Yeah, and yeah. the thing is, especially you know, when you, whether you're in the Middle East or, or, or you know elsewhere. There's a lot of desires that you're going to you know you're going to want to participate in, right, and right. you're going to tell yourself anything to make it. You know, halal, so you can participate in. So w w w when you have that knowledge itself, and you, you can just you, you don't have that option anymore. Yeah, of course. You alleviate yourself, alleviate yourself of that option, and you can no longer commit. I mean, uh, commit unknowingly the wrong. Right. You right, don't have right. that option. Anymore. Now you have the, uh, the, the 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 rulings established against you. Yeah, exactly. the Before we go to the audience, for that, you the, had a comment. The 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 environment is is a, plays a huge part right. in. Uh, you know, in a person's development and, and uh, a person's uh, daily uh, doings and going about their business, you know, that's one of the reasons that I left the United States. That's why I left, because, you know, I have children. I don't want my children to grow up thinking it's normal to walk down the street with no clothes on or to drink alcohol or to listen to crazy rap music or any of these things that the people in the West are doing right now. You know, I want them to have uh, good morals, good values. I want them to hear the adhan five times a day. You know, I remember from my youth things that affect me now. I remember, you know, from right. growing up when I was a kid all the way, you know, through my teenage years yeah, and yeah. so on and of so course. forth. These are, these are memories that I still have. And I want my children to always have pure memories, you know, to see the women dressed in hijab, the majority, you know, niqab, the men, 
you know, dressed in, in you know, in a thobe and here's the Adan and practicing and things like this. These things uh, stick with you for life. Yes, yeah, so Paul, we want to learn from our mistakes and make the next generation better. No. Uh, excellent point. Thank no. you, brother, for that comment. Let's go to the audience. Go ahead, brother. Yes, I just wanted uh, to add up to the practical steps that the Muslim youth can take into consideration to avoid any kind of fitna. And uh, we can, in this, in this regard, we can mention the advice of the Prophet وسلم, when he said that all young, all young men or all young people, if you have the ability and the capacity to get married, then get married. But if you do not, then observe fasting because this is indeed a shield against fitna. So, so, so I think this is a very practical step for the US to take into consideration, alongside with uh, lowering the gaze and, and only interacting with the opposite sex in the limits and, of, uh, and only when necessary, and with full respect and with full uh, appreciation to, this, to the opposite gender. Thank you, brother. You know, the, the first idea about fasting, before we take this report, mm -hmm. um, this day and age of consumerism and eating and drinking, that's a hard one, you know. It takes someone really, mashallah, strong to do that. And may Allah help them. You guys, check out this report, you guys. It's about it's a, a young British uh, Muslim brother, a student, who's talking about he's talking about you guys uh, being on campus and uh, before going to college, what he did to prepare himself. I thought that was a nice video put together by one of our uh, Syrian volunteers. You guys, check it out. She sees a practicing mu'min. She sees a practicing Muslim and is like, Allah, he's not going to go out with me. He's not even going to talk to me. He's going to palm me off. The girl doesn't even approach you. So this destroys the fitna of the opposite sex straight away. And vice versa with the sister. If she wears hijab, the, the mu'min, he won't, uh, the, the Muslim, he won't even come up to the sister. Because she's wearing hijab and she, he thinks she's practicing. And this is what happens when you act upon Islam and you show your Islam. You should have the mentality that you are Muslim. You should have the identity that you are Muslim. Now what this society does, is they push a different identity. They push the identity that you should please man. And that everything you do will be to please man. So your phone will be to please man, to show off. Your gums, your car, everything, your girl even. They take pictures of their girls and they put it on Facebook to impress men. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. I like what that young man was saying. He was saying, if you are basically, if you are practicing your religion and you have a Muslim identity, you identify yourself as a practicing Muslim, many, many, many of the fitness will go away from you. Uh, how many women will approach a man with, you know, if she knows she's, he's a practicing Muslim? How many men will uh, approach a pious girl who appears to be so? So, of course, this is a great, great uh, piece of advice. Uh, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed it and benefited from that. Having said that, we have a special guest via phone, via telephone. He's a professor from the American University of Cairo. You have seen him on Tech Talk. He's our esteemed and respected guest, uh, Dr. Baha Saleh. Thank you so much, Doctor. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Let's Talk. Nice uh, to hear about you, Malik. Uh, it's a pleasure to join your program. Dr. Baha, you know, when we decided to do this topic, uh, uh, Fitna on campus, I really thought about you because I know we, we've had a lot of conversations. You have a lot of experience teaching in the KSA where it was totally separated between the sexes and you taught via Skype. And now you teach at the AUC where everything is completely mixed. So I, I just yeah. wanted to give you, a, like, uh, if you can talk to us a couple minutes and kind of compare and contrast that uh, if you can. Go ahead, doctor. Uh, thank you for giving me the chance for talking about this uh, important and nice topic, uh, Malik. Uh, honestly, if you'd like to talk about uh, the KSA, I have some historical information about teaching for uh, different uh, uh, different uh, sex or different uh, genders. Uh, I start teaching with uh, e-distance or distance learning with the University of Maryland, the University College, uh, that's uh, 1990. We teach not different gender, but we're using e-learning because it's not possible to teach on campus, okay? So you don't see the other side, or you don't see your student, but you teach them through the internet and through the, the technology, the, the information technology, the multimedia stuff. But there is a separation between you and the student, and it's acceptable because the case uh, accepts that because you cannot move to, the, to your student because uh, they are in the army field and you cannot go to each separate group, so you teach them through the multimedia. Okay, when I, I go to the case A, there is no, there is no need for making such separation, but uh, I, I had a previous experience for teaching to the group which I cannot see them or using the technology for teaching them. That led me to, to read about uh, the historical information about 
uh, are very important for teaching to the people which you don't see them and there is no need or, or there is possibility to see them. If I back again to the, to the United States and I find uh, that, that this experience starting 200 years ago, telling that uh, it's not allowed for uh, American women for going to the school. The school is only for men and the percentage is only about one woman to, from each 10 can get her education. Okay, and we are talking about the United States, but uh, this is 200 years ago. Day after day, we found that the woman is a part of the, 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 the community, and uh, it is an important part, and they're starting uh, teaching or educating the woman. If we're looking to our religion, the first word in our religion is Iqra. The word Iqra is not for men or women. It's for all of us. It's asking us for going for educate ourselves. Okay? Sure. So we are before any, any uh, other nation asking the women or, other, or the men for going to education. But are there a need for making this mixed education? This is a big question for us. Yes, we have to educate our women. The, the religion is not against for education, educating the women because it's part of our community. But how we can educate the women and uh, protecting her from any other thing? Okay? So if you ask uh, about the experience, I found very good. And by the way, uh, the, the, the new, uh, I, knew, I read about the new paper, talk about uh, this uh, mixed education, and they found that now we have to separate between the people, uh, the, the, gen the gender, on the high education. And it's starting now, uh, the United States building this kind of education. SubhanAllah. Or building this kind of institute. That's very interesting, uh, Doc. Yes, this, this is amazing. But when we start about the experience, they say that uh, we have to convert the, the, the men institute to mixed institute, to be uh, accepting women. And uh, I think that starting at the year of uh, uh, 187, uh, which is to uh, say that uh, the 40 percent of uh, high institute at the United States starting accepting uh, women. SubhanAllah. For their education. Dr. Baha, I certainly appreciate your time. Thank you for those interesting uh, statistics as well. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, that's Dr. Baha Saleh from the AUC in Cairo saying some interesting things about uh, echoing what the brother in the, studio, in the studio audience said actually, and that is uh, the American uh, curriculum uh, educational system and program is now looking at uh, separating men and women at the high, highest levels of higher learning uh, at institutes of higher learning because uh, it increases focus and academic uh, performance uh, as well. Going back briefly to the video as well that we saw from the young British man, I want to offer my thoughts briefly on that. The brother says, and my experience as well, if women, or if the opposite gender identifies you as someone who is practicing your religion, then most people will respect you and they won't bother you. So I believe it's a matter of self-control and what we have in our hearts. What's in here and what's in here? Like the brother said here, do we have ilm and what's in our hearts? Are we sincere? So I think, inshallah, if you're equipped with that, then it won't be a problem wherever you are, uh, inshallah. Brothers, before that phone call in the video, Brother Rami was talking about something very interesting, interesting topic. He said, marriage. I always say, okay, what's the problem? Get married, right? When you see the calls, kids mixing the boys and no. girls. Say, so you like her, you love her, then marry her. No. But it's not that simple, right, Brother Rami? What were you saying? Not at all. Um, I think, especially in the Middle East, the institution of marriage has been completely destroyed. Oh, man, it's tough. Uh, and, and really, I mean, especially in my age, I would love to get married. It would actually alleviate me of a lot of the things that I, I have to struggle with and, and many others, whether it be male or females, that struggle with as well. Um, it's turned into a financial transaction. I mean, so now it's, it's more of a tradition. Now these parents are, are, are of the, say, of the, uh, uh, I guess, of the fiance, you know, I guess of your, you know, your bride or your future bride are asking for, for things that, I mean, that just don't even make sense. I mean, yeah. as, a, as a recent grad or an undergrad, right, I right. can't come up with these insane, you know, Brother, imaginary they, numbers. Yeah. Have you experienced this? This is true in the Middle East. I mean, yeah. so upon they say, okay, where's, you know, they, they expect you to have a, a lot, accumulate a lot of wealth and property. And you say, I'm just a graduate. I mean, perhaps we can work together and build up over a relationship. But no, people want it now. No. This is, uh, brother, uh, you know, there was a hadith I heard quoted by Dr. Muhammad. So maybe Brother Akhmi knows this hadith in the studio audience uh, regarding when people make marriage difficult, then uh, bad things will become prevalent. Is that yeah. right? Uh, I, I believe I heard Dr. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ask her to quote this hadith. It's just uh, sahih, no. Yes, yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفَعَلُوا تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ That means in English, 
or, or your fathers of the girls, if somebody or youth, a young man came to, uh, to, to marry your daughter and you find him a sahib deen, no. a religious man, he has deen, religion in, his, in himself, he's a respected man, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, uh, you must agree to uh, uh, let him marry your daughter. If you don't do that, you, will, you, are, you are participating in making fitna in your uh, society. That is the main point in our topic, the fitna of me. And this is what we're seeing, this is what's happening. Yes. Like brother, subhanAllah, you know, everything is going well. There's no reason why you shouldn't be married. But because the culture here in the Middle East, we can say has made that so difficult. They said the result. How many women do you know, perhaps in men in their 40s, and they're not married? Yeah, why? Absolutely. There's no reason for them to, not to be no, married. Exactly. But again, a lot of these engagements are broken off because uh, families are just asking for things above their, the their financial cap yeah, exactly, their financial means. So it, it's gotten to a point, I mean, now, when, when you speak to, when I speak to my friends or people who are, you know, people, even just acquaintances, they, they want to get married, but they've, they've taken the idea and they just shunned it because it just doesn't seem practical anymore. Right. All right. They, I mean, right. as a person, as a recent graduate, you can't, you can't afford the numbers that they're asking for. Yeah, of course. You know, and, you know, coming from the United States, go ahead, brother. That's something that's very, very big for, uh, especially for the people who are young that live in Muslim countries and they go to the United States. You should marry them off before they go, because if you don't, Everything is going to be waiting for them yeah. that, 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 you know, their desires call them to. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You know, you need to protect them by way of marriage. Of course, Absolutely. that's a great. And how many, how many, subhanAllah, look at us before we're Muslims or perhaps non-Muslims, many of them in the, in the Western world, they're not interested, they don't want to get married. They have the means, but they don't want to get married. They have a girlfriend, no. they don't feel the need to do that. No. Whereas we have good, decent Muslim people who want to get married, but they can't because of society, subhanAllah. So may Allah make it easy for everyone to get married. You guys stay tuned for more. Let's talk. We'll be right back after a short break. Right. Whispers of Satan, desires, peer pressure, leading you to a dead heart. But there is a way out. Living Hearts Welcome back to Let's Talk. We're talking about physical fitna, not physical fitness, physical fitna uh, on campus. You guys, interesting topic that we didn't discuss. I want to discuss it now in the third segment and bring in our guests in the studio audience uh, uh, as well. How much of society is to blame for this? I mean, let's take a look at this. Uh, a young Muslim woman, she would like to get married. She feels the pressure of society to get married. Of course, the men now are not looking at a uh, woman wearing niqab or proper hijab. They're not Many men aren't. The men are looking at women with perfume and makeup and are dressing sexy and are interacting with men. So now the good Muslim woman has the uh, pressure of trying to compete with that in order to get the boy's attention. So many, many more Muslim women now go astray and young Muslim women, especially I think on college campuses, because of social pressure. So I mean, how, how can they avoid that? With the women, I think that they need to understand they don't want the man who right. wants the women with yeah, the perfume. Yeah, and the man doesn't want the girl. She and, wants and, yeah. and the man shouldn't exactly. want the woman who's wearing the perfume in the... In the, the Sexy the, clothing. Yes, you shouldn't want that anyway. So if, if one like that passes you by and, you know, that was good for you, alhamdulillah. Yeah, um, alhamdulillah, yeah, really. You know, I think that, uh, you know, as parents, we need to instill what's correct in our, parent, in, uh, in our children. Um, and I think that's something that will, they will carry you know, on out the door, you know, once you're not around, once they're older, they're on the university campuses, um, you need to first instill in them what's correct. Um, one thing that I think that needs to be uh, uh, taught to m the majority of the people still is Tawheed. The people don't understand Tawheed. They don't understand Tawheed. They don't understand the implementation, how to implement Tawheed. A lot of us know this word, but don't understand implementation of it. Um, and I think that's a that's a huge that's a huge problem. Huge topic as well, that's, yeah. a huge, that's a whole different topic, though. Yeah, subhanallah. <laughs> no, brother Ramin, what do you think? Is a fitna worse for the, the young Muslim females or young Muslim men? 
Who's more um, at risk here? I don't like. The, well, I don't want to do the double standard, but I think obviously, I think female, you know, women are more at risk. Obviously, I mean, they have certain things that they can never, you know, once it's gone, yeah, they can never, right. you know, get back. Which right. is, especially in the Muslim world, it's it's very frowned upon. And to, uh, unfortunately, we we see it as uh, well, not unfortunately, it's the truth. But I mean, we see it as damaged goods, and that's yeah. and it becomes unacceptable yeah. to, uh, to a lot of Muslim brothers. Right. So my 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 thing is this. I mean, honestly, personally. If I see a girl, I don't want my wife to be eye candy to anyone else. Yeah, that's so exactly. Like every girl I see <laughs> wearing clothes that are, are based on a Islamic principle, that's the girl that I want. Yeah. And the thing is, actually, somebody in, with, with that perception, it's actually hard to find that nowadays because what I've noticed is a lot of the girls that were wearing hageb or, or abayet, now they're, you know... It's you know, worse than... No, it's not even that. Now they take it off and they westernize their, their you know, their, their, their attires to... to to meet to the, you know, to society's demands or what the men want to see them right, wearing. Right. So you find a girl one day wearing a hageb, next day wearing a miniskirt, and that's just the end of it. She's not going back to it. No. Yeah, yeah, right. I've heard Dr. Salah say, trust me, like you said, brother, he said, you don't want that girl wearing those sexy clothing because she's not, not going to, she's not going to raise no, your no. kids. That's not the one you want. And of course, you know, the women are at risk. Why? Especially in the West. Why? Because... They're going to fall victim and get into, get into something with maybe a, even a Muslim man or any non-Muslim man. Anybody who's not committed to her, she's, she's going to listen to his talk and he loves her, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Then she's going to do something that she's going to regret forever and she's never going to be able to get married again. No. And that, exactly. that's what they have to realize. Exactly. That's what they have to realize. Let's go to the studio audience, brothers. Uh, go ahead, Billy. How are you doing over there, man? What, what are your thoughts? Just uh, a little comment about this uh, subject we are talking about. It's, I think it all goes back to the upbringing. So the Absolutely. child boy or girl, if we, if he learn about his deen, about Islam, if it's Islamic upbringing, so he will learn about Tawheed, he will learn how to implant Tawheed, when he goes up, he can defend himself against any other fitna he will fight. And going to the campus right now, I think it's like a battlefield for Muslims. You find all kinds of fitna, you find women, you find drugs, you find smoking, you find anything, many things, not just women, not just gender. <laughs> It's so many things, many problems yeah. you find there. Yeah, subhanAllah. You know? That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, One thing, about like last week or something, maybe more, I've been to the university, one university. I find the student coming to the first year of, of their school, undergraduate. You know, girls wearing all makeup. What? You know. It's yeah. like going to nightclub. Yeah, I it's like going to the nightclub. I know. I, I, I drive by a couple of universities on the way to work, and I see that as well. So yeah. may Allah help all the brothers there. Uh, we do have a phone call from a sister from the United States of America to give us really the female perspective about what uh, the challenges and obstacles that they are facing, which are enormous, because I always say the Muslim woman is really, really under attack uh, from all uh, perspectives in the United States and the Western world, uh, f particularly. So, uh, assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Welcome, Sister Rana from the USA. Thank you so much for your call. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem, sister. We really want you to give your perspective about uh, the situation for Muslim females on, on university campuses in the United States. Okay. I will probably say that the biggest problem that I've seen uh, lots and lots of girls facing and falling into is the relationship uh, with boys once they enter the college. Uh, a lot of boys and girls from the start, from the first year of college, they start on uh, relationships. Uh, it can just start by uh, chatting online at first, and then after that it becomes much more like phone calls or meeting in person and such. Their intention is usually marriage. But obviously, since they're both young, uh, they say, we'll wait till we're done with school, we'll keep in touch, and then after, as soon as the boy graduates, he's going to go and speak to the parents. And that usually lasts about four or five years. And usually when the boy does graduate, it ends in... You know, he does not keep his promise, and the girl is heartbroken. And I've seen about 90% of those relationships end this way. And even the ones that continue, obviously, there's no barakah. There's no blessing from Allah because they started it the, on the wrong no. foot. SubhanAllah. That's an excellent correct. point. So, so what is the, this is a, a really big problem, as you have described it uh, uh, very clearly. So what is the preventative measure? Surely there has to be a solution uh, to stop this from happening. Uh, what is that solution? I would probably say that girls need to know that uh, marriage is nasib. Uh, a lot of girls, especially overseas, we think that because there's not that much uh, Muslims around or not people from their country, they say, I'm never going to get married. So they start with any kind of relationship, even if it's haram. So I would probably say that the biggest solution is that they have to know that marriage is nasib. And wherever they are, 
their nasib is going to come to them, inshallah, at the right time. And they have to start marriage on the right foot so that Allah would continue to bless them for the rest of their lives, yeah. inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. thank you so much for that phone call. I really <coughs> appreciate your comments. Thank you so much, Sister Rana from the United States of America. I think that's a great point. Don't start something haram because then it's not going to, it's going to be devoid of any blessing, right? No, so th I think the, the point goes back to staying within the parameters that Allah has set for us, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I feel also needs to be cultivated is uh, having a, a healthy fear of Allah. Do you understand? By having a healthy fear of Allah, it, it'll help you to avoid, you know, certain, certain situations. Although your desires may be calling you to that, you know it's wrong and you know that there's a penalty for it. If not now, later. And it helps you to, to avoid situations that are not good for you. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's many, many things in the religion that if implemented will make your life so much easier. Uh, like I was telling the brother here, um, in the States, in America, everything that's bad, they make it good. The things that are good, they make it bad. If you're young and you tell your parents you want to get married, the neighbors are going to look at you like you're crazy if you're 17 or 18 years old. How would you let your daughter marry at such a young age? She needs to have boyfriends and live with them and go have fun and... This is the mentality of the people, you know, and obviously we know that this is incorrect. Yes, you know, by sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah, that's going to protect us. It's going to protect our children. It's going to make the society as a whole uh, what it should be. It'll be good. It'll be peaceful. The people will have morality and, and alhamdulillah. Yeah, even sometimes if you're 14, 15, they say, what's wrong with your son? He doesn't have a girlfriend yet. Something wrong with him? As if it's no. subhanAllah. No. But may Allah guide every, help everybody. Brother Rami, uh, you know what Osama Shami, a friend mm -hmm. of mine once said to me, he said, uh, you know what, brother, if you leave something haram, Allah and Salah will, will replace it with something better. Uh, do you know yes. this, this is a hadith or ayah? Or? Yes, this is a very good co comment of one of our uh, Islamic scholars. He said, Man taraka shay'an fil haram, abdalahu Allahu khayrun minu fil halal. Whomsoever left something haram for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make it easy for him to find happiness in that thing that he, he thought that it's Hard. And that's a good message for the Muslim people that are watching who perhaps they're in, in, involved in bad behavior. Hey, look, everybody makes mistakes in life. You're still Muslim. You don't have to throw everything away now. You can start, try to rectify it, inshallah. Uh, we have a, a video. It's from uh, our Sheikh and Imam Kareem Abu Zaid. Uh, it's his, it's his, uh, a, a program he does where he answers questions from callers. A sister calls him and she asks him about, uh, about mixing in college campuses. He, and I, want, I, I chose this clip because he talks about, he says, no, it's wrong. It's bad to mix. However, he admits that it happens and it's difficult to deal with, so it's challenging. So that's why I want to uh, bring this clip. You guys check it out. In principle, our sister is talking about the mixture of gender um, in Islam. In principle, we must strive to place a barrier between the two genders. Don't even entertain, um, you know, uh, Unless you have to, unless there is obligation for it. Um, listen, when the Prophet وسلم, spoke about women going to the masjid and praying, he said, them, he said to them, the best place for women to pray is at their homes. All right? And we're talking about prayers here. The Prophet وسلم, identified a certain exit for them in the masjid. Uh, where women are go uh, uh, out of the masjid and, and into the masjid. So in principle, uh, we should not uh, entertain ikhtilat, which is the mixture of gender, uh, the mixing of gender, the mixing, right, not the mixture, the mixing of gender in the masjid uh, or any uh, facility, unless we have to. Yani, uh, sister, sister Rahan, just hang in there. Hang in there. Sister Rayhana, when uh, Prophet Musa السلام, went to Madian and he, he, he arrived at the scene, uh, when he arrived at the place where people are watering their flocks, uh, he found all these men, the shepherd men, the male shepherds, are uh, watering their flocks. And he saw two women are taking the side. This is from the time of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. What is wrong to you, with you? Listen, we're not going to go water our flocks now because we don't want to mix with these men. 
ف بانينج ميكسينج اوف جندرز از ان برنسبل ان اسلاميك تراديشن بات اي انديرستاند ذات ات از امبوسيبل سام تايمز تو مينتين ات بات اي شود نوت فولنتيرلي الاو تو هابن سبيشلي اف ام هافينج ان اسلاميك فانكشن وير اي كان ديكتيت وات هابنز I mean, if a sister goes to college, or if a brother goes to college, there is no way you're going to uh, public schools. There is no way in the world you can do this. But in our organizations, you, you need to do this. And it's not because, uh, and, 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 and this is important to understand, it's not because that we're thinking everybody's wicked here and, and uh, we're, no. Listen, listen. You see, the mixing of genders. Uh, a woman traveling by herself, uh, lowering the gaze, all right? And all these things, lowering the gaze and, and seeking permission to enter into the house of another person before you enter. All of these are called in order to block any means that can initiate adultery. Adultery begins with a look. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he says, كل المؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم. Subhanallah, tell the believing men to lower their gaze and to guard their chastity, their private parts. Uh, there is no way in the world that you look at a person and then you go and commit adultery with that person. There is a process in between, but the whole thing began with what? With the look. Now you're having genders mixing for sure a look is going to happen here and there and you're trying to stop this from happening. Kareem Abouzaid, I certainly hope you appreciate that comment. I, I really like that because you were just really explaining the situation how difficult it is. Uh, brothers, you went to Ohio State, 70%. Uh, females, is that what, is that what the number no, is? No, that was oh, him. Uh, so I back in Jersey? State, back in Jersey, exactly. No. Okay, New Jersey, 70% females? 30% males. 30%, okay. Uh, and, and Ohio State, I guess it already says enough. I mean, uh, it's a big football school, a big party yeah, school. Big yeah, one of the biggest ones in the nation. No. Of course, I was at UCLA. Uh, it says enough, LA. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the important thing, brothers, my dear brothers and my dear viewers and you guys in the audience, is it's what's here and what's in here, you know. Uh, you have to be strong and rock on the hawk no matter where you are. We're, we are Muslims, and we have to have self-control. Your thoughts? This is the golden rule here. As long as you, you know that uh, you have Allah the Almighty on your side, then there is nothing that you, you have to fear. You, you, you put your, your trust in Allah the Almighty, and you do your best, and you observe the Islamic parameters set by Allah for us, and I'm sure everything will be in line. All right. Brother Akhil Basuni, uh, one point that we didn't mention that could help this is practicing the Sunnah. What happened to the brother taking more than one wife? Well, we were talking about it's already hard to get married to one, so how are we going to get married to more? But this is also a solution, isn't it? Yes. Um, I have an advice for the uh, parents. Make it easy for, uh, for youth to, uh, to find marriage easily. But don't make it hard for them bringing a flat the way like that, <laughs> paint it like that, and bring <laughs> it. Make it easy for them. And uh, when they start their life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they start with the good intention of, being, of having good family and yeah. good uh, ch children, Allah will make it easy for them to uh, to find m money easily and uh, find things like that. But my, uh, my advice to everyone, again, I will repeat the same sentence that I've, I've said that you remember me with it. Man taraka shay'an fil haram, abdalahu Allahu khayrun minhu fil halal. If you uh, leave something uh, that you know that it is haram for the sake of Allah, Allah will make you happy inside your head that you, you refer here in your heart. You'll find happiness in your heart because you left something haram. And I have a story for one of my very, very close friends. He had a relationship with a girl in the time, at the time of, of university. And uh, after many years of, of having a love story, a very big love story, <laughs> full of problems. Wallahi, that is, that, that's a reality. After marriage, um, they, they married for one, two, three years. After three years of marriage, he said to me, he said to me, sincerely, Ahmed, I don't feel happy inside myself by marriage this woman. Subhanallah. I say, subhanallah. If you lift the haram thing for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you happiness with the good wife for yourself. Okay, Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys, we're out of time for this episode. However, I would like to bring you back. This is actually just part one of our two-part series. This is Physical Fitting on Campus. 
Next up, next week, inshallah, we're going to have intellectual fitna. We want to talk about philosophy, atheism, different ideologies attacking the Muslim psyche of the Muslim student. Are you with me, Brother Rami, next week, inshallah? Yeah, inshallah. All right, can you stick around as well for, sure for another episode? Yeah. All right, you guys certainly appreciate your time. You guys at home, I certainly hope you benefited from this episode of Let's Talk. You guys always send me your comments, your, your information, your feedback at Paul Sathur TV as well as Facebook, and you know the contact information. Having said that, stay tuned for next week. We're going to do part two uh, of this series. Uh, this was physical fitness on campus, rather physical fitna. Uh, next week is coming up uh, intellectual fitness, so stay tuned. When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you tracking seems all uphill When things go wrong as they sometimes will When the road you tracking seems all uphill When the funds are low and the dips are high And you want to smile but have to sigh When care is pressing you down a bit Rest if you must, but do not ever quit. Success is a failure turned inside out. Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt. Success is a failure turned inside out.